Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode three. Yeah. Four. No. Five. It's three. Three. Three, two, one. Number three. Wait. Wait, wait. Three. Hold up the right and my fingers. Well, oh, do you know how to do this? The Vulcan sign. No, it's the alien. The alien. The alien. Hello. If you're listening on audio, you're probably not understanding what we're doing right <laughs> yeah. now. Just watch our YouTube. Watch I'm it on YouTube. You YouTube. can see uh, Miss Brilliant to my right, or maybe your left if you're watching on your computer. Myself, Nicola, also known as The Big Cat. A.K.A. Big Cat. Big Cat. B-I-G-C-A-T. So on this episode of The Brilliant Bod... Bod... Uh, Brilliant also known as Brilliant Health and Wellness Podcast with Jenny and Mr. Pat, Mr. Big Cat. Today we want to talk about two things, right? People might be wondering, what are those two things? First thing being franchising. Second thing being stocks and bonds. What are stocks and bonds? What is franchising? Well, they're Let's investments. Let's start with... Alita, you have some uh, interesting yeah, well, news they're about, investments, yeah. about uh, franchising, so maybe you uh, want to talk a few minutes about that. Yeah, well, they're investments, and you know, mm -hmm. um, we will talk about stocks and bonds, and I'd like to add, we could, I could throw in some real estate, too, because that's what I'm really passionate about, mm -hmm. investing in it, too. But first, um, announcement, I guess, about mm -hmm. About the franchising, um, and I know it's like very um, has uh, when you hear franchising, like a lot of people have this like preconceived notion. You know, um, big brands come to mind. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think some people don't even know what a franchise is. Yeah. You well, know, let's start with that. Yeah. You know, what is a franchise? Well, it's um. Mm -hmm. When a certain business develops certain system and processes that can be successfully mm -hmm. replicated um, in different markets mm -hmm. uh, with enough uh, profit for, for that franchisee, mm -hmm. and also um, they have less risk than starting their own business, right. let's say, in that same industry, because 90% of franchises survive versus only less than 50% of businesses uh, startups survive and that is often because people getting into business might not have that expertise in marketing mm -hmm. market understanding don't have service offering set up as good or product um, set up you know suppliers as good as mm -hmm that company that already been through the ringer they developed everything they have it, it like know. what's an exact like you know you're obviously in the massage and skincare industry um you know my experience is more technology but what you know just what, what would some of those processes be you know what would a, a, a franchisee or someone that runs a franchisee what, what would they expect these processes to be would it be like how to run a point of sale or yeah so it could mm -hmm. be um how to fold a towel you know? yeah and yeah how long <laughs> to cook, cook a, a burger right you know or uh, how uh how to say what to say on the phone to a prospective mm -hmm. customer you know right um how much budget you should spend on google or facebook ads you know right. all those things like or what templates to use for ads or getting people in the door. Like, it's... That consistency. It's, three, it's usually 300 page or more or less manual, you know, mm -hmm. that is getting presented to the franchisee from mm -hmm. the franchisor. And so it's... You get like hand holding you know along the way you are mm -hmm. still independent business owner mm -hmm. and you are responsible you know legally as you would for any other business mm -hmm. not the franchisor mm -hmm. um 
but they're there to support you all right. the step of the way. That's why you're paying the royalties and you're also mm -hmm. paying that you can have marketing fee, to have technology fee right. that helps to grow that bigger corporate franchise brand. Mm -hmm. So they do like national marketing, they do even international, go international right. brands. Um, they also develop the best technologies that you can have, let's say, you know, a lot of franchisee uh, businesses win over local mom and pop shops because like look at Domino's. Right. I and love often, me some Domino's. Yeah, and <laughs> often their food is not, let's say, might not contain, usually does not contain local ingredients mm -hmm. like your mom and pop place might have, right. which might be healthier. Uh, but however, they went because they have these great marketing, right. um, you know, that attracts right. great marketing ads, great, um, great systems. Like you go on their website, most of the time, everything works seamlessly, mm -hmm. online ordering, um, delivery times. You know, they had where they would deliver your pizza for free if they, like, didn't deliver in a certain time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes with mom and pops, you can't get that because they don't have that system worked out. Or, right. you know, or let's say um, they, um, they just don't know how to, they don't have a good graphics Right. They, you know, they kind of right. try to do everything themselves, right. so that is a disadvantage. So that's why these, you can, yeah. Well, and with uh, a franchise like Domino's, you know, I think the reason why they're not necessarily using local ingredients is because they want that consistent product. Yeah, and right? they have the you big know, supplier that right. they get good pricing. Like yeah. you want, you know, I've gotten, you know, I was, years ago I was in Denver and, you know, I ordered a pizza from Domino's and you know it tastes exactly the same for the most part <laughs> it's, As, it's not always that but, but similar, you know it's yeah. very you know it's almost knowing what you're going to get and that's part of the model right with the with the being a franchisee consistent you know, quality that, yeah. that that consistent product and I think that's why you know maybe you know, using Chili's as an example, they're not exactly a franchise, but, you know, they're a chain. But it's kind of the same idea. You know, you know what you're getting, whether you're going to a yes. Chili's in, in Vermont, California, or... Um, Especially with food. Yeah. Correct, yeah. And, and you know, so how does that translate into um, using kind of that same concept of what you're trying to do or what you're doing with your business with franchising massage and skincare you know what 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 does that translate into the the client if they get a massage at a corporate location here in Vermont and then they go to a franchise location in say uh, you know Keene New Hampshire you yeah. know a few hours away what what can that client expect so they can expect a similar clean nice atmosphere mm -hmm. um, and also our the way we train our therapists mm -hmm. and estheticians uh, mm -hmm. And the way we hire um, is with different, I would say, different expectations than other businesses or other franchises mm -hmm. that I know of. Right. Uh, of course, I don't know every single one out there. Right. But the ones I know, we run things differently in a way that we uh, pay our therapists more because we're able to cut all cut out in person receptionists because we mm -hmm. train them to be like a micro co manager co receptionist in mm -hmm. addition to our virtual receptionists that we hire mm -hmm. that are very in in, uh, important uh, you know position in mm -hmm. our spa mm -hmm. um, so what what they can expect that they will get uh, the best quality therapists that want to work with us and stay with us because of our reputation treating right. them well, mm -hmm. where sometimes what we found other, I found at least, or and heard from other therapists that massage and skincare, uh, well, like beauty um, chains sometimes pay very little, so they don't mm -hmm. stay there very really long. Yeah, so the clients have um, trouble when they get used to therapists and then they leave, they have right. to find new ones, or yeah. they can't find like time to book with because they're booked. You know, 
and a client might get frustrated, you know, if they work with someone for you know, five or six appointments and they go back and they kind of have to start over with someone, mm -hmm. right? So that, and that would be, you know, it, just like with a food franchise, but they can expect the similar services, right? You know, or I guess the exact yeah, same services. Yeah, the same services, yeah. of mm -hmm. course. And, you know, well, with the massage um, and skincare, of mm -hmm. course, they're not robots. You, you can, like, have massage to be exactly the same one. And actually, that's not what we're aiming for. Right. Yes, we're aiming for the same add-ons. You know, you can get cupping, you can get hot stones, hot towels, you can get chemical peels, you can get waxing. Like, you can get the same services, of course, like, the style, because these therapists, they're not robots, <laughs> at least not yet. Once like the, it will like their technique will vary right. but the result will be the same so is that the is that step three after franchising is making oh. massage robots yes that's <laughs> maybe maybe down the line ai yeah but right. i think that's actually gonna be the very hardest thing mm. to create robots for create right. ai for because right you would have to get into someone's brain to copy paste all the techniques they picked up over right. many years yeah. because when ai for example when it learns how to write an article it just reads thousands millions of other articles that right. have been written already by right. humans when it's massage how is the machine going to get into other therapists yeah. body and brain and know these mechanics these little um, moves and intricacies that the therapist picked up over right. years. This is very hard to make it to right. be as good. It's just I know when I've played around a little bit with, um, you know, chat GPT or, you know, the other variations of it for things in the technology field, it just doesn't sometimes have that, that je ne sais quoi, I guess, you know. And a lot yeah. of times I look at it, I'm like, this it just isn't going to work because, and the reason why I know that is just from, my experience of working, you know, we have about 60 different clients that are on across a different landscape of, you know, that, that, that just experience, you know, but to get back to the franchise model, um, you know, what else could a customer expect or, or, or what kind of, you know, someone that buys a franchise, what can they expect, you know, because yeah. there's some, they have to, they have to put some money up for it, right? You know, so yeah. maybe walk us through kind of, you know, how that process will work for someone. Yeah, that's... sure. Mm -hmm. So what I was also uh, mentioned already a little bit that, you know, these, um, you know, services, we're going to provide them the model of mm -hmm. the way our business is set right. up and okay. they will have to replicate, you know, buy the tools, the products. Right. Um, and the, the therapy, you know, we focus our customized, like, bespoke services, bespoke services to all, mm -hmm. every single person that walks through the door. So our therapists, they're taught to um, to adapt to each person, you know, but they're still following those um, style procedures, mm -hmm. uh, what the customer wants. But um, in terms of like the build out, it's not going to be as much as other um, uh, franchise spa franchises out there because we believe that we can work to adapt with um, the existing real estate mm -hmm. spaces in the area uh, we don't need to be at the prime prime downtown making walk walk because we don't take walk-ins mm -hmm. so we you know we rather right. put that money into marketing right um, so the real estate doesn't have to be the most expensive and doesn't have to be the most expensive build out because what we again go back to focusing on the quality of the mm -hmm. treatments and you know you can what we will care is like the place is extra um, extremely clean right and um, presentable like painted nicely mm -hmm. and get nice flooring but you know you don't have to change the whole facade of right. the building and maybe, in, you know, is one of the advantages of your model that maybe you don't want to be downtown because typically parking, right? Yes, we want to be convenient. Right, yeah. you know, because if someone is, you know, coming for an hour massage or 90-minute massage, they probably don't want to come in stressed because they just drove around for yeah. 15 minutes trying to find a parking spot. So it could still be downtown, but mm -hmm. it could be 
you know, a couple steps away from that biggest puzzle bustle where it's like the most congested, right. you right. know. Right. So not to say that it couldn't be, but right. yeah, but but we're not striving to. Right. It doesn't have to, you know. Right, because it's a it's an appointment based. Business. Yeah, it's that's an appointment. The, that's the, yeah. the concept. Right? Yeah, it is. Um, we want we want to be in the areas like where there's already PT studio, perhaps mm -hmm. uh, other wellness establishments. So mm -hmm. it has you know we just want to be in a quiet area right. where people find it convenient to come in right. and um, enjoy their services. Um, so that's the plan. Yeah, and you know I think one question that maybe people listening have is you know okay, okay you know franchise you know I'm, I'm working for someone right now I'm thinking you know what's my next step right so is it is it buy a franchise is it start a business well you know what what are maybe some of the advantages that someone would realize buying a franchise over say starting their own yeah. massage business well it's important thing to mention that mm -hmm. um Two different types of people, or even three different types of people are out there. You know, people that want to be an employee and not mm -hmm. worry about running a business, marketing. Mm -hmm. They enjoy doing this, doing the service. They enjoy doing the technical part, the, they're honing their craft in that one specific, kind of mostly one specific field, like being like a surgeon, you know, mm -hmm. being a dentist. Uh, technician, repairman, you know. Um, and like a mechanic. You yeah. know, they just want to work on a, right. a pickup, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Show up, do their job, leave, they're done. And then there is people that entrepreneurs, they want to work in the company, but they want to be able to, to manage stuff. They enjoy managing people like managers, you know, but they want to be able to own part of it or, you know, a lot of the company, they want to be able to have impact or say so on certain things. Right. And they want to feel that ownership. They enjoy right. being owners. And they don't mind taking on more responsibility. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't mind, um, like, having work after they leave. Right. They don't mind, like, you right, know. Right, because they have an investment. Yeah. You, right. Yeah, so it's not like mm -hmm. you leave it out the door the minute you shut, because you worry about it. You right, know? but right. I and I don't mind that. Like, right. I I don't I enjoy that. Well, and I think someone that purchases a franchise, you know, they they want to know what that recipe is to make the cookies. Yeah. Right? They want to know that someone has already baked those cookies a hundred times and has refined that recipe, right? Instead of trying to figure out that recipe on their own. Yeah. So the other. Mm -hmm. So the I was gonna. So the, that's the type two person. There's right. another. Type one more type, so three types, okay, employee and um, entrepreneur, like mm -hmm. in the company, and then entrepreneur that's not, that wants to completely do their own. They want to build something from scratch right. and be the inventor, you know, mm -hmm. and I think that's what I, I am, that's me, you know, I have difficulty following, I mean, I can, I follow directions, but I like inventing things. I got school. I I got good grades. I follow directions. You know, a lot of say some entrepreneurs were did badly at school because they watched through the window. That was me. You know, I did fine at school, but uh, but I'm but I'm creative because I like I went to music school and so so when we're talking, who wants to purchase franchises? Probably that entrepreneur that doesn't want to be um completely. You know, that want to have that ownership but still wants the support that's right. who, who we want have someone work. to help them yeah. answer the questions that they've already had to figure out right yeah you know they want to be able to say or maybe not have to ask those questions because it's 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 part of the handbook right exactly yeah. you know 300 page manual mm -hmm. yeah we'll right cover everything right there. yeah how to, to fold the down to folding the, yeah the exactly yeah taking the guesswork out. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So, I mean, what else, like, you know, if someone's thinking about franchising, you know, what are the top two or three things that they should be thinking about? Or, you know, either someone that wants a franchise or wants to be a franchisee, you know, what are, what are those, like, closing 
closing thoughts on on that well, home franchise. Yeah, they have to be prepared to do the work right. first couple of years. It is an investment, so uh, it will depend on them as well. If you know the more successful um, that uh, the it will be the more successful, the more they're involved. Right. Um, so we're looking for someone that doesn't want to just put money away like he would in the stocks. Right. You know? Right. So it will involve work, you know. But so ideally, someone who enjoys being in that industry that they're buying mm-hmm. the franchise into, right. um, that would be the key. Mm-hmm. They're passionate and want to, maybe they hate their current job, so they right. want to be something with their. Or maybe they're working in, you know, kind of, you know, for what we're talking or about. by themselves and don't know how to grow. Yeah, you know? or they're already in maybe a health field and they yeah. want to kind of have their own business, but also have some of that support and, you know, some of that mystery removed of how to, to actually to, to do that, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, support the mm-hmm. big um, brand, stand bigger someone. Um, doesn't have to be big, but someone that already figured out. Right how to make money and not lose money. Right, right. You know, they still want to put the work in, but they don't necessarily want to have to figure out how to do point of sale or -hmm. or online ordering. You know, like with with Domino's, you know, you can, Domino's has the online ordering. That's what that technology feed, you know. know? That app tracker, that pizza tracker. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's that consistent product, but also having some level of the hand-holding and, you know, uh, an expectation like of, side selection you right. know like they help you we right. will help people to find appropriate real estate space mm-hmm. not to overpay but not go somewhere where they won't do well right so there's a lot of things that we will mm-hmm. be helping and the franchise source usually help their franchise mm-hmm. yeah so i guess that will be a common theme on these of these next uh episodes of you know where things are at with the franchising definitely and, can and, give you guys something and you yeah. know maybe some of you know franchising it's almost like building a business right you know well it's another business in right. itself for yeah. me so i will be building that so yeah. it's almost like you need to have a, to franchise a franchise right <laughs> help people if they want to franchise maybe learn from some of the the, the takeaways that you found yeah, during that process because it's a it's a long process and there's a lot of a lot of legal aspects to it as well well yeah you have to mm-hmm. um do we are now gonna start working on our fdd you know mm-hmm. government and what, what's program. that what you know uh, it's, what, it's franchise disclosure document mm-hmm. so we have to disclose you know what revenues they could expect right. to make based right. on our profit and loss and mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of lines, you know, that one particular is like item 19. Mm-hmm. Um, and there, I I will know more after I complete it. Right. I haven't completed it yet, so right. I can talk more on it next time. And right. if you have any questions, you can put in the comments. This right. is going to be uploaded to uh, YouTube as well. And yeah. Our podcast on Spotify yeah, and, and I, iTunes. I think, you yeah. know, that's what we were, we're really hoping that people will, you know, put some, put your questions in here, you know, and hopefully maybe based between us on our experience of, you know, maybe hopefully we can help other Wellness people. Wellness and health and profits. Yeah, and hopefully we can answer some of these questions yeah. that people have based on maybe our experience or, or what we know. Yeah, this podcast is all about wellness and wealthness. Wealthness. <laughs> is that a new word? Yes, new word. <laughs> But I think that's what we're looking for is, you know, we want people, you know, to to have wealth. You know, mm-hmm. I think everyone wants to have some level of wealth and you have to define what wealth means to you, to each mm-hmm. individual person. But it's also, you know, you want to be healthy so that you can and, enjoy. And enjoy, yeah. yeah. Like, I feel like money alone while being depressed and unhappy in your everyday work is not... Uh, that's not called success. Maybe it's just the financial. Of course, I would rather be financial and mm-hmm. unhappy than <laughs> broke and unhappy. Right. But yeah, you ideally you want to have both. And I know? think that's you know what you're trying to work towards is you know you want to be wealthy, but also healthy at the same time so that you can enjoy it. 
right? And that's kind of what our yeah. business is about, right. you know, like this franchise business is. Mm -hmm. We always, when I started this business, I always focused really on to paying fair wages mm -hmm. and above the, like the industry average. And that's what we're going to try to maintain as, mm -hmm. because like I said, we have specific model, how we able to do that by cutting out some of the other, or like cross training right. some other yeah. positions and, right. and, and outsourcing overseas certain positions. So we're still able to pay everyone a very fair wage. Um, <clears throat> so that, in working with integrity yeah. above short term gain right but looking at our um mm -hmm. our um how we show up you know in the community right. and our reputation is right. gonna stay like the forefront right. of our enterprise right and i think that you know looking at different ways to build wealth right you know there, there's many avenues you know yeah. people have been able to be you know, very successful, you know, working for other companies, right. you know. You got to get in on the right time, right position and work your way up and you can make millions, billions. Yeah. yeah, you know, and I think that there's, you know, there's different ways, you know, buying a franchise is a way to become wealthy, you know, investing in stocks or bonds mm -hmm. is a, a way. Real estate, right. you know, there's many different avenues and that's kind of, you know, one of the, the things that we wanted to talk about, too, on yeah. the second half of this episode was, you know, stocks and bonds. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's almost like there's some mystery around it, you know, of, of people are like, well, well, what's a stock? What's a bond? What's what's the difference between the two, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, a very fundamental. And do you have to have both, like, you know, like. Right. Yeah. You know, so, you know, the at a very simplistic level, you know, a stock is a you're buying a, a, a portion of a company, you know, at a very just basic level. You're buying a, a piece of Microsoft, as an example. Um, you know, whereas a bond is, you know, you're buying a portion of, a, of say, Microsoft's debt, you know, as an example. But why would you do want to do one over the other? And, and that, that, that's a great, great question. And, you know, there's you know, there's a very simplistic way of looking at kind of investing in the stock market and a very easy way of looking at is, you know, say you're 20 years old, right? Just as an example, nice, easy round number. So if you are trying to, you have $100 to invest in the stock market or bonds or, you know, and you're 20 years old. So 20% of that should be in bonds and then 80% should be in stocks. And as you get older, you kind of want to shift from stocks, which are typically more so More who risky. does that? Do you do that? Have to do that yourself? You know, so it it depends. You know, if you're trying to do this yourself, or maybe you have you know someone managing your portfolio. But at, just at a very you know high level, that's kind of because you know bonds are typically More no, risky. no less risky. Oh, okay. You know, where stocks are riskier. But the nice thing is, is you know if your stocks are quote unquote not doing very well, typically your bonds are still paying. So you know that. 80% in the stock market, 20% in bonds, that bonds kind of help smooth out the ups and downs so of the stock market. So do you get market. dividends from them? Well, you, or you do like reinvest the profits? Well, it, you know, a lot of the, the, the easiest way to think about it with dividends is typically you just reinvest that into mm -hmm. what you what you have. Or you could cash them out. Yeah, or there's a lot of people that um, hold a portfolio really based on dividends you know there's a lot of companies out there that pay quite well in terms of dividends you know those quarterly but dividends. you have to have a big chunk right because how much does the dividend pay you every depends. year yeah it depends on the company but you know having multiple avenues to help with that wealth mm -hmm. building can help kind of smooth things out you know if you know if for instance say you you know and during the the first you know, housing crisis years ago or not that long ago, you know, where there were certain markets that absolutely tanked, you know, having all of your eggs in one basket is typically not a good thing. You know, being in technology, do you really want to rely on one vendor? You know, you want to kind of hedge your bets around, you know, have the best of both worlds, so to speak. But having those multiple strains, right, to help smooth out the ride, so to speak. You know, and I think an easy way for people to get in, invested in stocks is really, 
you know, I think Yolita, you know, you said before that you really like the S and P five hundred. Well, for me, yeah. that's the only thing I trust yeah. as a fail proof way. Yeah. Um, and ex- ex- explain to people what you know. What is the S and P five hundred? Because you know, I I don't think a lot of people might not know what that is. Well, it's um, by software generated five hundred most successful companies, and mm-hmm. they've been proven over long term right. that they always outperform actively managed portfolios. Right. The bit the one disadvantage for me is though, and um, I already said that I'm passionate about, you know, seeing where my money is and mm-hmm. and having impact in the community, all right. also investing first in my own business right. and my own education, things like that. The one thing you can control what companies are in that S and P five hundred. Right. So if you have, um, like moral or some, um, right? Because there could be a business, say like uh, tobacco, big tobacco. Yeah, could like be if in that you business, don't want right. um, mm-hmm. support that industry, like right. that's too bad, you know. Right. Right. But that's what makes money. So you know, that's what. Um, that's what you have, you know, that's one thing for mm-hmm. me personally, it may right. not be for other people. Right. And I think for a lot of people, you know, that, that, that's a valid point. You know, um, there are funds called ESG funds that essentially are kind of investing in companies that, a group of companies that, you know, are committed to, you know, paying fair wages, you know, doing good for the community. Mm-hmm. Um, so there are kind of some ways uh, of well, kind of. Well, that would be an option. Yeah, you know, there, so you know, the stock market. As long they're truthful, yeah. <laughs> the stock market is so large. I mean, mm-hmm. it's so big. There's, well, yeah. You know, so there's many. the U.S. stock market. There's the international yeah. stock market. You know, it's just like real estate. You know, some people only invest in single family homes. Some people right. only invest in condos, commercial buildings. You know, it's the same thing in stocks. You know, there's. There's different aspects of stocks yeah. that, you know, everybody can get into. And, you know, for someone that maybe is, you know, hey, I, I really like real estate, right? And I really like the stock market. Well, there's things called REITs, you know, yeah. that, you know, essentially funds that invest Which in... Which perform very well because, I mean, real estate performs. Well, yeah. Except, and that, like, commercial, not so much. And it's kind of like, you know, almost like the... You have that real estate play... But you also have the stock market play, and you know maybe it's a actively managed fund, maybe it's just tracking the entire market. But you know it's a way of kind of, well, maybe you want to get exposure to some real estate, or maybe you want to get exposure to you know like a, a an emerging market. You know yeah. maybe maybe well, you technology for example. Always. Yeah, or you see um, you know like um, a lot of companies are going on a diversification for their supply chain, you know, not relying so much on manufacturing in one single country. So maybe you want to look at what well, what's your play like, you know, what's going to be the next, you know, countries that are going to be, you know, kind of emerging as, you know, a powerhouse of manufacturing and kind of maybe putting some of your money into that. But I think, you know, at a for a lot of people just to get started with you know, stocks and bonds, like, you know, where do they get started, right? And that's a common question that a lot of people think about or, or wonder, and they just don't know where to, to get started. You know, if you're working for a company, you know, a, a for-profit company, you might already be invested in stocks and bonds, and you just don't even know if you're a 401k. Um, or if you're working for a nonprofit company and you're contributing to your 403b, you might be exposed to stocks and bonds already. And it, I always make sure you roll into that match because some people exactly. don't put money in and they won't get that match. And, and essentially, that match that your company is putting in, it's free money. straight up free money, yeah. right? You know, and the one thing that a lot of times people are like, what's this 401k, 403b? Like, what are and these that's random... That's a crime. If you work for a company and they have 401k and you're not contributing in, you have... I mean, come on. Yeah, you have it, to do it, it. it's free money. Yeah. You're losing out on free money. Yeah, save, but, you know, cut down on expensive dinner once a week. You know, <laughs> throwing a little bit more in, money. Yeah. You know, and um, there's certain tax advantages, you know, with putting into a 401k or a 403b. And those those 401k, 403b, that's just the the, the part of the, the U.S. tax code that's referencing essentially this retirement fund. That, that's, that's what these random numbers and letters mean in these retirement plans. But yeah, you know, you're you're missing out on free money.
but you're also missing out on, on tax. You know, there's tax advantages of investing in a 401k. Well, it and a 403B. reduces. It can reduce depending if it's like Roth or not. Well, 401k and a 403b is pre-tax dollars. Mm-hmm. You know, so you're putting money in before Uncle Sam gets his. Cut. But then you pay when you take out, yep. so you can choose what. Yeah, but, you know, maybe when you retire, you know, paying taxes is not necessarily a bad thing coming out of your 401k or 403b later because, you know, you're, quote, unquote, rich. You know, you have a lot of money. That's that where tax on. planning comes yep. into place, and it's important to have a tax plan or two, especially yep. if you have multiple streams of income and mm-hmm. multiple different investment types like right. Uh, stocks or real right. estate. Right, yeah, so I mean, there's stocks, to... bonds, you know, there's um, those stocks or bonds that are accessible through your retirement plan. There's Roth IRAs, there's traditional IRAs. Um, if you are self-employed, you might be able to contribute to a SEP, which would also, you know, mm-hmm. um, help reduce your tax liability right now. And Well, if you want to show more less income to mm-hmm. pay less tax. Right, so yeah. Right, and you know, and there's backdoor Roth IRA too that people can do. Yeah, and it so you know the when you reference the backdoor, yeah, yeah, you know, for people that are the IRS considers high earners, essentially you can put you know money into a traditional. Think almost anyone could do that if they're self-employed. There is a way. Well, typically self-employed, you go into a SEP. You know, as a as a. But then there's also limit though how much you you know. There's also with, you know, doing a traditional IRA to put money in there, and then if you're a high earner, then you can move that into a Roth IRA. Well, what's IRA. a high earner, though? Considering... You have to, the IRS changes that every year. Mm-hmm. There's, a oh, income, yeah. there's an income threshold that you meet. I think and it's like one, around maybe 120 or So, something. you know, mm-hmm. then that can help, you know, lessen that tax burden. But, you know, there's also, you know, there's advantages, you know, to stocks, bonds, to real estate, to IRAs, traditional IRAs, and that's where something like, you know, I'm, I like Fidelity. Vanguard is another popular one out there. Um, tons of free resources, especially from Fidelity, about, you know, what what all this stuff is, you know, how to get started. You know, Fidelity has a great knowledge base and interactive videos that you can watch to help you get started and answer a lot of these questions. Um, their customer service is great. Mobile app is great. Portal is great. No sponsorship. Their fees or any, are low. Yeah, no sponsorship or anything here yeah, for Fidelity or Vanguard. Yeah, but their fees are low compared to most other. Yeah, and they have like a, active a yeah a lot of funds that just have no fee, just in general. You know, so it's a, a way to those large, you know, passively managed index funds that you know there, there's no. And after fee coming cer- you have certain amount of money, mm-hmm. they can assign you like. Yeah, or through your company, you might be able to have access to, you know, resources through, say, Merrill Lynch or Morgan Stanley that can help answer some of these questions. Those are high reputable companies. You know, and they might not be, you know, they're not going to actively manage your investments, but they can answer a lot of your questions. And they they have access to a lot of really smart people to answer a lot of your questions and, too. and you know mm-hmm. the high net worth individuals mm-hmm. all sometimes even though like let's say yeah like just keeping it in smp will uh perform well like sometimes they do opt out well not sometimes quite a times they opt out to have um active manager yeah just because um like if there are times when stocks go down because they do have so much money, yeah, uh, it can be like stressful. So having that active manager yeah. preventing them from doing something silly, stupid, you know, taking money out when they're not yeah. supposed to, and just for that, a lot of people find that like having active one is good, especially if they do have a lot of. Yeah, and I mean, there's Growth Fund of America. You know, is a great actively managed. Or Merrill Lynch, stock, you know too. that fund that, you know, during the pandemic, with having someone kind of driving the bus and they're swapping out and you know getting Disney at you know rock bottom prices you know, as as an example to pad these funds. That's where it actively yeah. managed. But you know you're, well, you you're can paying. Do that yourself yeah, you're paying too. for that. Yeah. You know that someone to to, to steer yeah. the bus. But, but if you have a lot of money, then paying that fee is not. Right, or you know, there's been you know there. You know, America, 
growth fund of America, they've had, you know, great years over the past, you know, 10, 15 years. So, you know, paying a one point for the actively managing when it's producing a 25% return every year is, you know, something that you need to think of as your, you know, for your own, if that fits your investment strategy and, you know, portfolio. Yeah. And, and, you know, one of the things, too, that I always like to mention with stocks is, you know, people that, you know, do day trading or are on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube, you know, trying to tell you how to make it, make make yourself rich quick. You know, there, there's no shortcuts, you know. There's no shortcuts in anything. Right. Yeah, like you being know, successful is boring and hard work every day. Yeah, and, you know, that. people that tell you otherwise are probably trying to sell you a course, you know, their course rather than, you know, useful information. Yeah, what so, you see is yeah, that. Yeah, you know, you always want, you know, at the end of the day, it's your money, right? You know, so you want to know where your money's going. You maybe don't want to know the intricacies of exactly, but you want to know, you want to understand well, what you're buying. Everyone should have some sort of investments and assets because mm -hmm. the only way to get wealthy, and this episode is kind of more about wealth and business and investment than it is health. I think our previous episode was more like about health, you know, pollution, stuff like right. that. So, right. sorry guys if it's too heavy on the on the, you know, business part, but you know, it's important, you know, to right. stay healthy, happy, to have this taken care of, you know. Everything is um you know, possible to learn in whichever you uh form of investing you choose, you know, you got to see what uh, suits you best and how involved you want to be. Right. And what makes sense for you and, you know, your family? Or... And your time. Right. Like how much time. Yeah. So let's say, in my opinion, investing in actually buying, a, if you can buy a business, let's say you mm -hmm. see a business like owners retiring and you can mm -hmm. buy an existing local business, yeah. that is probably the best investment. Because it already has good cash flow, yep. usually. And, and and you'll know what it is cash flowing during yeah, the due diligence you see, process. And correct, there, yeah. these are people selling yeah. it not because the business is bad, but because they're actually retiring and right. their kids don't want to take over that right. business. Yeah. So that's something, actually, i never done. I would like to do that at right. some point yeah. if I can in my lifetime. Because, you know, always now, well, I'm passionate also investing first in my own business growing my own business now growing you know we'll be growing the franchise mm -hmm. branch of the business the mm -hmm. brilliant franchising um mm -hmm. but that's as like you know that's something people don't think about sometimes yeah. the only thing like real estate or stocks are the yeah. only thing i could invest but if that company has a manager even in place you might not need to do that much work to run. yeah and, and you know i've you know, work with some clients that, you know, broker business deals for yeah. you know, people that want to sell an existing business. And there's two sides of that, right? Yeah. Like there's the play of the business is just not doing well because well, maybe it, it needs to be, be careful you know, it needs, those, yeah. you know, management needs to be swapped out or they need some, you know, technology policies. Process. Outdated, maybe yeah. just renovated. But, the, but there's yeah. also, you know, businesses that are doing very well the owners are actively involved in the business. They want to see it succeed, so they're willing to, you know, help you get up to speed. Yeah. But, you know, they want to do something else. You know, they're tired. Yeah. You know, they are they want to retire. They mm -hmm. want to, you know, spend time with they just the... change the industry. So yeah, you, you know. Um, there was a, there's a really popular restaurant, you know, not that far from here that has been, you know, for sale for a little bit. And it's really the owner's great restaurant, always been busy, super successful. And, you know, they've been running it themselves for years. They're, one, they're you know, the, the husband, he's the, the head chef. And they want to, you know, travel, you know, have a little bit more time in their life, get, you know, play with the grandkids. And, you know, so there's, it, it's like, you know, that side of the play is, you know, the business just needs to kind of be keep, keep the fire right. going, yeah. stoking the fire, yeah. keep, or, you know, the side of the play is it, it needs the fire to get to be led. Or maybe like both yeah. spouses owned it and then one spouse passes away. Yeah, and the or other yeah, doesn't want to like deal parents, with Parents, you know, want to pass it on to the kids, but the kids maybe have their own business. They don't want to deal with it. 
you know, there, there's a play out there for pretty much anything, you know, and just finding what that play is and what it means to you is really, you know, how that's got to be part of your, your plan. Yeah, you know? well, also good mm-hmm. businesses to invest, um, like car washes or laundromats, you know, those yeah. are very kind of lower in daily to yeah. day activity. Yeah, I, there's a lot of people that, you know, are looking for investments with, you know, quote unquote, simple math. Right. So what and what does that mean? You know, something like parking, parking yeah, lots, or you know, storage. storage, parking garages, you know, things like that. Very yeah. simple math, you know, easy. Yeah, I, mean, and I guess that's I, the I should, you should I should rephrase yeah. that. Nothing's easy. Well, yeah, <laughs> but, you know, the things, you know, think about what makes sense for you in terms of is it buying a franchise? Right? Is it building mm-hmm. a business yeah. to I mean, then you, sell franchises yeah. or stocks, bonds, buying you know existing businesses? Yeah. Right. Well, if you don't want to like completely retire, then you know I feel like buying a business or like if you want if you're passionate about industry like wellness, buying right. massage and skincare, you know chances are you will be getting regular massages. You know that's one benefit. It's a side benefit, right? Yeah, you know, and you enjoy. Uh, communicating, working with that type of, techn- you know, that industry that, because um, usually these people, you know, are more spiritual, they are more wellness oriented, you know, mm-hmm. and if you want to be around that uh, on a regular basis, that's kind of a, a lifestyle, you're buying right. that lifestyle. And maybe know? that person is already, maybe they're, in, you know, a personal trainer and they kind of want to maybe be, you know, shift that that industry into something like yeah. massage or skincare or maybe, well, maybe they've been themselves yeah, working, working for somewhere, someone else but now yeah. they want to put right. into management and right. being like an owner yeah um, yeah and then the other thing i was going to say about um you know stocks is like for people that want that you pretty much you you can be hands-on you know it doesn't require the one benefit with stocks is or bonds it's require very little of your Right. You know, I do like real estate a lot, um, like commercial real estate, especially multifamily. Um, I'm so, well, commercial multifamily, that meaning residential, but in the commercial aspect. Right. I didn't mean to say like office space commercial, right. but office space, you know, that's a little tricky. I wouldn't right. invest money in those right now. Uh, maybe, I mean, it, there is certain um, like industries, of course, they, like medical. Right. You know, always needs. Yeah. But um, but the thing is like um, what I like about real estate in general, you can uh, easily get infinite infinite return infinite return on it because once you're ready to cash out refinance, usually in five years or even sooner in a year, sometimes people you know they do a lot of renovation on the property, they get appraised for much more right. than what they bought it. And that way, you pretty much have asset with no money down in it, and then you can buy more and do the same thing. Right. But, you know, I think that and, it's important. But it's more work, you know, it, and that, definitely more involved. Right. It's not it's just, you know, buy, rinse, and repeat. You know, there's a lot there of time, time, money yeah. that goes into it, you know. Renovation Renovations. Money. Yeah, you know, taxes. Having good contractors. Right. When you do refinance, um, you know, they're, they're, the market might have changed. You know, the interest rates could be higher. It but, could be more you know, difficult real to respond. Real estate is extremely um, it's, safe investment, and it's yeah. it's slow and steady. And you know? it's slow. It's, yeah. it's you know proven slow and steady. But in hundred past hundred years, it never. I mean, it might dip for a short time, but like if you look over, it's the same as S and P five hundred. It never like went down and didn't bounce back you know those are two i think for the most part you know that's correct you you know if you intend to hold this for a long time it will always be more than what you thought you know in the 06 07 08 housing market you know there's there's parts of this country that still haven't recovered from that and you know that that goes with any if you hold it you know so i think that it just you know the 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 final thought on these different investment vehicles is you know do your do your research, you know, figure out what makes sense for you, figure out what makes sense for your family and, you know, what you want to do, 
You yeah, know? well, Is how it... much involved right, do you want to Right, yeah, be? you know, do you want... What lifestyle Yeah, do you want to be heavily involved and actively, you know, doing renovations and working on real estate? Or do you want that real estate play with maybe a little bit hands-off and maybe you hire a company to manage it? You know, yeah, and then you're paying the, you know, property management fees. Or do you, is the play of, you know, buying, you know, REITs in the stock market that's tracking kind of a sector or, you know, specific aspects. What's and the then, easiest way to not have to worry about um, that broken toilet, the classic call? <laughs> the 3 a.m. toilets or, are Or like what I've been having actually re- recently, uh, faulty fire alarms Mm -hmm. you know go off out of nowhere because like humidity or like dust or something happens. yeah you know and just it's funny that you mentioned that you know during you know install a lot of people don't realize that you know if you have a smoke detector right outside of a bathroom bathroom Mm -hmm. you know typically you know someone's taking a shower it might be a lot of steam you know whatever you can open up that door that can set off the fire alarm or you know if they need to be you know cleaned out batteries need to be replaced you know a lot of these different things but you know i think that's a good metaphor for you know things in the stock market you know you might be like you know why all of a sudden is this sector underperforming you know and it could be things completely out of out of obviously your control because it could be you know supply chain issues with you know silicone or you know mm-hmm. or whatever for making chips or well, you know ex- yeah. you know capacity is you know not being um you know it just can't ramp up yeah. quick enough but i think you know as, as we kind of wrap up this episode you know it's really i think thinking about what those different investment vehicles are what makes sense for you how much time you want to put into it and you know kind of what your final goals are because some, you know, real estate slow and steady, you know, there's but stocks different things. Are slow and steady too. There's and different, stocks are not there's different vehicles for everybody too. that yeah. makes, you know, sense. Yeah. And I think that that's, you know, what you just need to think about. Yeah. And I think that, you know, well, you got to think you have to be, smart. yeah, you, you got to, what makes sense stock, for you. You have to think when you're picking a certain real estate, right. Location, or you're looking you at a franchise, think. you know, yeah. what makes sense for you. So, you know, Put in, you know, your questions, you know, what, 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 what do you think makes sense for you? You know, I'm, I'm curious what, you know, people listening, you know, what, what makes sense for them? What's their, what's their yeah. strategy? And you, and, and you know, Nicholas is definitely more into stocks where I, I like real estate because I, um, I also think, you know, banks wouldn't borrow against it if it wasn't safe. I think, you know, at the it's end of fair, the day, it's fairly safe, you need yeah. to have multiple irons in the fire you know if anything has shown over the course of time putting all of your eggs in one basket is potentially not a good idea so it's good to diversify diversification is always a good play no matter what especially once you have a little bit more build up of something i mean if you just started out focus on one thing first i would say because then you might be like to all over the place yeah you know people that were thinking that you know what my play is going to be investing in commercial real estate anchored with gyms right yeah you know just as an example that probably wasn't the greatest play during the last pandemic right yeah you know there's 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 going to be you know who knows what the future is but you know thinking about that diversification yeah. what makes sense best for you and you know, putting some of those comments down there to help us, you know, see what we can do for you folks and, you know, help us brainstorm ideas for the, the next episodes and think about how we can, you know, help more people. Yes, please subscribe, leave us comments, and um, we'll chat with you in a couple weeks here. On Have a brilliant day. the fourth episode. Yeah, it will be the fourth. Hopefully, we're getting better with each one. It's not worse, right? Hopefully. That's always the plan, right? (laughs) Bye.